back at the Clean Run facility to give another seminar. This seminar is what I call the Balancing Cues Seminar. And it's all about taking the six basic cues and mixing them together. And the, f the focus is going to be on the motion cue. What you're going to do is you're going to set your dog back here and the drill is they're actually going to do three drills in one turn, okay? First time you're going to do one, two, three, and four and you're going to do it with no side change. So you're just going to do a pull. The second one is one, two, three, four, but I want a landing side front cross right here. And the third drill is one, two, three, four to that jump up there, okay? And I want you to handle from the same side for the serpentine. Somebody tell me how you're going to cue the pull. Okay, deceleration w is a good option because if there's no side change, there's not any re real need for lateral motion, right? Um, but if you're, one thing that when you're doing dr short drills like this, it's very difficult to show deceleration. Um, because we have quite a few little dogs in this group, it might be easier to show with them versus the large dogs. The reason why is because when you're first starting um, a drill from a standstill, if you want, if you, once you just get going, that's what your dog tends to read. They don't usually have time to read the deceleration. So it's hard to show a deceleration cue on just a one or two jump drill. Um, we might, we, because we have a couple eight inch dogs, we might be able to actually have those people start from a running start and show some real deceleration. The big dog people will probably have to just use a no motion cue. Um, what are the other cues going to be that are going to tell the dog to jump the jump and then turn versus turn before the jump? Your shoulders, your shoulders facing forward. Shoulders facing forward, what else? A verbal, a verbal obstacle command like jump. What else? Inside arm, um, inside arm, all those are forward cues. So your shoulders facing forward, a verbal jump command, and an inside arm cue. Those, those three supporting forward cues tell a dog to do the jump, even though your motion is not supporting it. For the first one, you remember you're going to do three things on your one turn. Right. And you can cue the first one any way that you think is best for your dog. One thing that I'm going to try and help you with is decide what's best for your dog. Okay. Um, so you're just going to do the pull to start with, okay. which means you're going to cue with either deceleration okay. or no motion, meaning you can either just be standing still um, to start with, or you can actually run into it. It's up to you. I'll run into it. Okay. Get a running start. Whatever, you want to, whatever you want to do. Okay. All right. Now, do you have a stay? Yes. Okay. <laughs> but what I saw was the dog veering to the right because you fell, yeah. fell behind a little bit. Yeah. Um, so you either need to start further over or give yourself just a little bit of a head start. Okay. Because one thing that when you're, when you're using a motion cue, I mean, basically, if she had to redirect here, that's... That could be construed by the dog, and here it was not a problem because of the distance to the jump, but it can be, cause a problem be, and make the dog believe that he's actually supposed to turn left, okay? Because if, you, if you're running along and then you have to step in to redirect, that's going to cause the dog to switch on to his left lead in this case, which can potentially lead to, to uh, a spin the wrong way. Now, because it happened so far back, the dog was able to correct in plenty of time, but you don't want to miscue 
you know, if you're falling behind or if you're running laterally to get around the wing, that's going to miscue the dog. So pre-plan a little bit more and do that one again. You can do a running start. You just have to do it from far, you know. Okay. All right. Now, you're sort of doing a hybrid, meaning you're, you're coming up and you're starting to move laterally, but she's not actually moving laterally really until the dog is almost committed. Um, just use deceleration only, okay? Which means really you shouldn't have to use lateral motion hardly at all for this, for this drill for your dog, right? <laughs> um, so, and, and if you're concerned about it coming through the gap, you just be in the gap to start with. Okay? Okay. Looked like you wanted to do a lateral, <laughs> move laterally. <laughs> um, how many strides did her dog do, you guys? Anybody pay attention? I didn't pay attention either. Um, I don't know that it matters because I felt her dog read the turn read no matter how many strides he took. Um, he only took one between three and four, so I'm guessing he probably was able to take one between one and two. Um, but if the dog's reading the turn, it doesn't matter how many strides, and that's a good example. Remember, all I want to do is cue the turn. That's my goal. If I'm trying to train the situation, I'll spread it out so I can see the added stride and know that indeed my cues were read appropriately and I can train the dog that I want him to um, change his jumping behavior. But out on course, because I don't know the striding, if, as long as my dog has read the turn, he can jump in extension or relative collection. I don't care. <laughs>